Welcome to Raising Scholars, an educational podcast brought to you by the Lake Havasu Unified School District in partnership with Sean Lawless and 32 Bravo Media. This is a podcast designed for families to hear all about the mission and vision of learning, which is being carried out at LHUSD for the academic and social emotional growth of students at our district. It is also a place to share tips, tools, advice, and reflections on how our schools, families, and community can help our students make the most of their learning potential. We are so excited to be bringing you a conversation on a variety of topics from educators, parents, administrators, alumni, and even students across our district. Our goal for you each time is to leave with a little bit more knowledge on how to help your students be successful. So let's dive on in together. Sandy Robbins is a longtime educator and advocate in our Lake Havasu community. Starting as a teacher and a reading specialist in elementary and middle schools in California, she eventually moved into a principal position for many years and recently retired after 37 years in education. She is a wife to Fred and mom of two kids, Amy and Scott, and a doting grandmother to four beautiful grandkids. After moving to Lake Havasu in 2010, she became a volunteer for the Literacy Council in 2011. When the director retired in 2021, Sandy finally took over the duties as director of the Liter Literacy Council. They now have over 30 tutors who have volunteered over 450 hours just this past year. This year, 27 students received tutoring along with six adults. Even with that said, there are still many students waiting to receive support and the council is actively trying to recruit more tutors. Sandy is not just involved in literacy councils, she's also a board member of the Workplace Education Literacy Coalition of Mojave County, Welcome, which serves Kingman, Bullhead, and Lake Havasu City's literacy needs, and serves on the local Kiwanis Club nonprofit and has served on the Balloon Festival Board, chairing the balloon run in the past two, year, two years. Most recently, she's joined our Havasu Community Schools Coalition to work in conjunction with our schools and many of our other dedicated nonprofits, businesses, and organizations who work so hard to help support the kids in our community and our community schools. Sandy's passion is improving literacy because she knows it increases self-esteem, quality of life, and opens the door for increasing success. This is why we wanted to hear from her today. All right, Sandy, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I really wanted to be able to invite you today because uh, on the Raising Scholars podcast, we talk about so many different things uh, in support of our, our families and our kids, mm -hmm. but bringing the community in and um, so many community leaders such as yourself that are really working hard to try to support kids. So today's topic is leveraging local support and how we're um, helping uh, with our community partners to support student success. And the Literacy Council, I know, is a, a big love of yours. Mm -hmm. um, you're leading that at this point. So I want to ask some questions and see if we can share out with our families um, exactly what you're doing to help out. Certainly. Okay. So uh, the first question is really just about you. Um, tell The parents listening may not know you. Some of them may know you already. But tell them a little bit about yourself and how long have you been in Lake Havasu? Uh, well, we've come to Lake Havasu for a long time for water skiing and yeah. fun and weekends. Yeah. But uh, I retired in 2010 as a high school principal, right. and we moved to permanently to Lake Havasu. So, um, yeah, I started off actually in elementary school. Yeah. And uh, then I really, I've always loved reading. I became very involved with the Inland Area Writing Project, okay. which is from UCR. Yeah. And so I became a trainer in writing skills. And then I ended up going to the district office. And then I went to a high school as a curriculum vice principal, working okay. with the teachers in English and writing. Awesome. And then ended up being um, a high school principal. But I've always had the emphasis of English writing and reading. Okay, and so so your entire um, educational career was in California, right? It was. So in Redlands? Seven years. <laughs> in, the, in Redlands? It's actually San Bernardino. Okay, um, I wasn't. Yes, yeah, San okay. Bugonio High School in San Bernardino, and I was vice principal at San Bernardino High School. Oh, that's so, so great. Yeah. And so you retired in what year? 2010. Okay, and so and then you guys moved straight out to Lake Havasu, yes, right? Yes, we did. Yep. Okay, so tell me when you got involved in the literacy council again? Uh, about the first year we were here because I immediately um, wanted something to do that I felt was worthwhile and mm -hmm. I heard about the literacy council. I met Christine Lupian who was oh, the yeah. head of it. At that time they only tutored adults. Okay. Uh, so I met with her and we went through a little training and right away I had um, she assigned me to an adult and that adult I still work with. Oh. Uh, not only are we friends, I've tutored her, oh. her husband, 
both of her children. Oh, that's I'm kind so of neat. a nana, but oh. you know, it really, and she still, you know, and we've gone through all the materials and uh, she's now thinking about uh, getting her GED. Oh, that's so, so fantastic. We're looking at that. So. Well, that's so great. Yeah. So, um, you currently serve as the coordinator for the Literacy Council. Can you share the purpose of, we, 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 you just introduced your work with the mm -hmm. Literacy Council, but can you share with parents the purpose of the Liter Literacy Council and the way that it serves the students? Uh -huh. okay. uh, we really feel like working individually with a student, mm -hmm. especially students that are having a hard time in the classroom. Okay. And we notice that when teachers recommend students, many times it's are the students that have a short attention span, right or they have organizational skills, sure. or all, so the tutor individually can work at the teacher's suggestion and, and some materials right. to really help that student and zero in. And we feel like it's usually just an hour, once or twice a week, um, and we've seen a lot of improvement with the students. Oh, and, and the tutors really bond with the students, because we are doing school-aged children now, right. usually um, first grade through fifth. And I know as, as principal at Jamaica, we work together to support the kids mm -hmm. now. So are you uh, are you serving all the schools in Lake Havasu? Or are you, I don't know uh, what the capacity is at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so are you working with all schools? We have about 37 tutors. Okay. Um, and so far, we're really working with Jamaica and Starline. Okay. Um, they've been very welcoming. We have a little pod there. We have a liaison at each school. Yeah. We do serve Telluses. We okay. have some tutors at Telluses, and we also work with Smoke Tree. Okay. So we'd like to work with the other schools. We've had some requests, sure. but we're of working. Course. Yeah. And we're working on trying to get more tutors. And okay. That's, that's which really I'm sure we'll talk about even yes. more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So. Um, how can parents or local communities uh, members support organizations like the Literacy Council in your efforts? Um, I know that you're looking for tutors, but are there other ways that you've tried to recruit? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we do have a web page, the okay. Lake Havasu Literacy Council Facebook page. Um, we're also part of Welcome. So we, of course, accept donations. Yeah. Uh, we're always looking for books because uh, we'd like to give the students books. That's fantastic. Um, and so, so if parents have books maybe in their home libraries to mm -hmm. donate and the schools don't need them, you yes, would be willing to take those? Yes, and we have a spot at the um, Lake Havasu Library. Oh, They've perfect. given us a space. That's great. So if anybody went in there and said, this is for the Literacy Council, they would take them. We have a drawer. Oh, so, so awesome. Yeah. That's great. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. They've been very accommodating. Um, any other ways that you feel like this, uh, the community could support you? I, I want to uh -huh. make sure we're getting the word out. Right. Well, I think, honestly, I, I we have people, and I do it myself, talking to groups, just really trying to encourage people to tutor. You do not have to be experienced, but just trying to get more people because we have a lot of students wanting a tutor, and um, that's really our biggest need right now. Right. Well, so if there was a parent who was looking to find support through the Literacy Council, what do you think would be the best way for a parent to find out how to get support? Okay. Um, they could get on the, the uh, Facebook page, or um, we have posters around. So we to are, send a messenger, or? Yes, okay. you can, there's a place in there to say, I would like to tutor, and we get back to them right away. Okay. We are having an orientation meeting September 6th Great. at the library at four o'clock. Okay. Uh, we do provide a manual. We work with anybody that hasn't tutored <clears throat> before. Um, but basically, at any time, I mean, my number I, is 909-226-2747, and they can call me, or email Lake Havasu Reads Lake Havasu at gmail.com. Okay. So, um, I'm curious, so for the parents who are, who are wanting to know, mm -hmm. are there specific age levels that you're currently working with, and, and what, is the, what do you want that to look like over the course of time? Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually think most of the kids are in third grade because that's such that's, a pivotal yeah. year. Yeah. And it's really the last time the schools are really zeroing in on reading skills, especially for fourth grade. Yeah. So if there is an issue, I think that's kind of, so we do have the most of third graders. We do have some second graders. We are working with first graders okay. at Telesis, so we do work at all. And I actually been working with a fourth grader but our majority is probably third grade. Um, out of, you said that it, at one time, and still I think a little bit, you do tutor adults too, yes, right? Yes. So are, are they young, like young adults, uh, any age adult? It's been so cute. Many times it is English learners okay. and that they sure, would that like makes to sense. do that. That happens to be the one. 
But recently, I had a 75-year-old man uh -huh. come, and he said, I'm tired of listening to audiobooks. I want to read oh. them myself. And so, That's so great. Yeah, it's really great. And so we've been working with him. Oh. I have another uh, lady, and her husband passed away. Okay. And she wanted to be able to read um, up better all of the documentation oh, and sure. the things that she needed yeah. to know about and there were a lot of vocabulary that she wasn't familiar with. Sure. She's a native English speaker but still just needed sure. some help. Needed to expand her so, vocabulary. Yeah, so, and, that that's, and whatever they need we do respond to that okay. and we've worked with some agencies. We do have some um, of the agencies here in town that call us if they have an adult that's requested some, okay. some help. And the materials we have for adults is very self-explanatory. Sure. It's very, it uh, tells you exactly what to help them with. So. Okay. And with the younger students, you're working on decoding and, right. and fluency right. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, what are some other organizations that you currently partner with? You said the library, um, mm -hmm. but are there additional ones that help uh, help you support the students and families? Uh, yes. I'm on the board for Kiwanis. Okay. And we have the Key Club. So we're looking at the Key Club because I have had some requests for like calculus and algebra and I'm oh. like, no, not, <laughs> not happening. Yeah. But we were talking to our key club oh, whether they great. would be interested in sure. doing that. Some like of high that. school tutors? Yeah, high school tutors. That's and so great. we're looking at that. Um, I am on the board for the balloon festival. Oh, yep. So uh, we and have done the, have coordinated the fun run. And some of those funds come back to Kiwanis, oh, and then fantastic. Kiwanis has shared those with us. So that's very helpful. That's I'm great. I'm part of the DK Delta Kappa Gamma, yep. as we you are. are. Yep. And um, uh, what else? I was going to say something else that I was going to do, but now I forgot what it was. <laughs> well, <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So, so, and if um, if the families happen to be part of any local organizations that they know right. are interested in helping right. serve, just to know to contact you. Right. Okay. Oh, the other one is the Welcome, which is oh, the right. Mojave County, and it's Kingman, Bullhead, and and there is a, a website called Welcome.org. And it has information about all three literacy programs. So, can you share with them what welcome means? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to test my skills. I know. Sorry. Workplace Education Literacy Literacy Coalition of Mojave County. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so it just covers all the the right. more broader Mojave right. County. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, if someone was looking to be a volunteer mm -hmm. for the Literacy Council, you mentioned to go to the Facebook page. What if uh, um, you you mentioned as far as qualifications goes, it's probably not as hard as you think it is. But are there specific qualifications that they have to have? No. Okay. No, the main thing is if you want to work in the schools, then right. uh, they need to go to the school, pick yeah. up a volunteer packet. There is. Uh, free fingerprinting and yeah, that the district provides yeah. and, that, and that only happens once every two years and it's fully, if you go into a school and say I'd like a volunteer packet, they give it to you, it's self-explanatory right. what to happen. Yeah. Uh, and But if you're going to a tutor an adult, we have rooms at our library, okay. the tutor rooms, sure. and you don't have to go through any of that. Yeah, I've you would seen just that. contact us through the okay. Literacy Council and we go from there. Awesome. Okay, so Okay, so par parents are always trying to support their kids at home too, right? right. I mean, they're yes, right. they're always looking for other people to help, right. but what would be some suggestions? You you have a background in leading, reading and literacy, um, so what are suggestions that you have for families about things they could do at home to support their students if they're waiting on tutoring? Uh, number one, read with your kids yeah. and have, have lots of... Uh, print literature around. I mean, the statistics about students that yeah. were read to even once or twice a week, yeah. they're more likely to be in the top 10% of the classes versus someone that ha hasn't had that. Well, so and they're more just more likely to be readers. That's right, and yeah. they hear the vocabulary because many times on test, there's words that you might not encounter in daily vocabulary, mm -hmm. but they would see that in the reading right. or hear it. Uh, yeah. So really, and pick just, it up in context. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, no matter how old they are, kids still love to be read to oh. or read with you, as of you course. well know, with your. Um, yeah. My, my kids are in middle school, so. <laughs> well, my granddaughter is 14. That yeah. was just here, and she says, "Oh, I brought a book for us to read." Yeah. You know, so well, and I think that's just it. Is that, um, yeah. a lot of the times when they get a little bit older, mm -hmm. they enjoy 
both reading with you and mm -hmm. then reading by themselves and then ha just having a dialogue right. about right. the books right. a, yeah, a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, because then you can also understand the context of what they like to read, mm -hmm. right? So if you're mm -hmm. looking for books, you know right. what to find. <laughs> yes, um, so uh, thinking um, about the, the families that might be listening, is there anything else that you would want to share about with our families at this time about what you're mm -hmm. trying to achieve with the Literacy Council? Um, we're, we're really trying to support the community because really reading has to do with self-esteem. It makes them more employable. Yeah. Uh, and so many kids drop out or, you know, there's even, you know, there's such a culture of bullying sometimes. And so okay. kids don't want to get themselves in a situation where they could be embarrassed or whatever. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it, I just think it's such an essential skill. It's, it's crazy because if a person says, oh, I'm not really good at math, mm -hmm. people kind of laugh. No one really laughs if you say you have problems reading. I oh. mean, it's unfortunately, yeah. it's just still a, it's a an essential skill. skill. It's an essential skill. Yeah. And so it's easy for kids to get behind. And so if any adult just has an hour or two hours a week, yeah. we can work with them to, to really help a kid. And it really oh. makes a difference. I'm so excited that you're doing this. Really, um, it's because of people like you volunteering around the community that our our schools and our community families have the the resources that we need, and we still need to be doing better. We still need more volunteers, and I think. Um, for the families listening, what I'm hoping is that they turn around and share this with, with mm -hmm. as many other people yeah, as maybe. they possibly can, because we really do need more volunteers, um, both with the Literacy Council, but also just involved in our schools. Right, yeah. right. So that was more of the content, but okay. I, I always <laughs> like to have fun with uh, our podcast guests. Okay. So we're going to do something called uh, Rapid Fire. You ready? Okay, I think so. Okay. So because you've been in education so long. I'm just curious, what was your favorite thing to teach when you were in your classroom? Well, actually, I think third grade because you got to teach the times table, you know, multiplication. Oh, multiplication. Like and cursive writing. They okay. love cursive writing. Yep. And they were really becoming readers in third grade. Oh, so we could true. do, you know, so yeah. that was always kind of my favorite grade. They get to a point it. where they get way more excited and yes, yeah, yeah, they can but think I, through. I mean, I've always loved teaching writing too in English. Classes. Oh, that's great. Okay, so what is one thing you would tell your 10-year-old self now to give them perspective? If everything is going to be okay. <laughs> because yeah. you know, you're so dramatic. Sometimes like, we need that at 30. <laughs> I, I still <laughs> 10 years that. old, for sure. for sure. Yeah, yeah, because things can seem like so insurmountable, but usually they work out for the best. Of I course. Think, with a positive attitude, I think. And well, I think what you, and I think what you just said makes the biggest difference, yes, right? A positive right. attitude, your right. mindset. Because you could have a negative attitude right. and you're just going to carry that. I've always felt what you send out, you get back. That's right. So just trying to stay positive. So um, I have such admiration for for you as a person, but also Thank just you. what I you've done in your career. Same for you. <laughs> well, so was there a person in your life who inspired you to become an educator? Yes, it was really very funny. Um, I went for an interview with uh, Dr. Glenn, oh. and um, it. Uh, I almost cried in the interview. It was horrible. Oh. I thought I had done terrible. Oh. And at the end, he offered me the job. It was at a private you know, reading clinic. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, I, I can't believe you're offering me the job. I go, I felt like I didn't answer anything to your satisfaction. He goes, well, you were the best of you were the least worst oh, of all geez. the And he gave me three books to read and oh. said, call me in two weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but he he really did change my whole perspective Aww. on education and how to work with kids. That's so great. Yeah, but he was tough. But Talk about taking some something and turning it around, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so um, what was your favorite subject and your worst? Um, obviously English reading. I've always loved reading. So those um, are your favorite? Yes, yeah, so my, my worst by far is Probably higher level math yeah. and chemistry. At one point, I thought it was college to be level a, and beyond. Yeah, a microbiologist because I had this wonderful teacher in college, and oh. I thought, oh, yeah. And then my second year chemistry, I'm like, nope, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> Sounds a lot like me. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Um, your favorite hobby? I kind of know this answer, yeah. but <laughs> skiing. I love yeah. water skiing, snow skiing. Yeah. So yeah. Well, and you're skiing. a runner too, right? And I yeah. do run. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Was it always an educator? Yeah, and it's really funny. I don't really remember having a goal of what I wanted to be. I mean, yeah. I knew I was going to go to college, but I didn't really. Uh, when I first started college, I thought I wanted to be. Um, I, my major was sociology and I was going to be like a social worker or mm -hmm. something like that. So I changed several times. At one point there was nursing in there. Yeah. I mean, I did flop around a lot. But it sounds like you were always kind of meant to serve, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, last one is what were your top three favorite books from your childhood? Yeah. It's so funny. When you asked me, you know, when I started thinking about that, the, the book that first came to my mind, I was in fourth grade and we were on a vacation to the beach. And it's called Smokey the Cow Horse. <laughs> and the only reason I remember <laughs> I this book heard of that. so much is because I didn't want to go out on the beach. I wanted to stay in there, and my mom could not believe that because I was so into this book, you know. But oh that's just gosh. a funny thing. But um, I love Where the Red Fern Grows, oh, yeah. uh, Call of the Wild, I, all of those kinds sure. of books. I like. I'm gonna have to go look up <laughs> that gonna, book now. I don't even know. <laughs> I've if never it's even heard of that rich, book. But it was all about this horse and all the, the it really the adventures of the horse. But yeah. it was so interesting. The first time that I was like, okay, I, I'd rather do this than anything else. You know? okay. <laughs> well, that's so. So those are classics for yeah, sure. Yeah. Definitely some of my favorite too. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you for your time oh. again today. Thanks well, for thank coming you. to share um, the things you're doing with the Literacy Council are amazing, and I really hope that we get more volunteers so that we can really reach more kids and our community. And Cam, and say it again, yep. Lake Havasu Reads yep. at, gma at gmail.com okay. or uh, Lake Havasu Literacy Council Facebook. Awesome. Thank you yeah, so well, much, thank Andy. Thank you yeah. for having me. I really, I really appreciate great. you. All right. Thank you. Good. Yep. All right. We want to take the time today to thank you and Sean Lawless from 32 Bravo Media for helping make our Raising Scholars broadcast a reality. You can tune into this or any new episode at our LHUSD website, on the communications page, on our LHUSD Facebook page and YouTube channel, or linked into our quarterly, quarterly newsletters. Don't forget to tune into our next episode. We can't wait to see you there, because at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of their parents. <laughs>